Hi, hello again, my name is Daniel and welcome to the part two of this tutorial. Now where the fun begins. Not actually because we are going to do the setup of the Django and also we are going to do the setup of the React because even if you are going to start on uh, the Django for the authentication, I like to set up the two things uh, in the beginning. So for this we are going to create a project. I already created mine here. Journal ballot. You can call that everything you want. Okay, and the first thing that we have to do is to create an environment. For that, we are going to open our terminal. We are going to open the terminal that we are not used to to work. So to create the environment, we tap Python M VNV. And here we create the name of our environment that uh, I'm going to set to ENV. And as you can see, the environment is being great. And why do we create environment? Basically, each time that we install a package with uh, pip, the package is going to come with uh, a certain version. And depending on the projects that you are working, you are going to have different requirements of version for different pycons. So what we're doing with the VNV, the virtual environment, we're like creating a container that all the package that we're installing, they are going only to be um, contained in that project. So if you have another project, there are not, um, there are not going to be conflicts with uh, the other one. Okay, now that will create our virtual environment. We have to activate it. So for me, it's going to be source scripts activate. And again, depending of uh, the uh, PC that you are using, uh, this command can be different. For example, in Mac, I think it's source and V instead of scripts, it's been activate. Windows, I think it's only NV scripts activate, but uh, I'm not sure. You have to look at it. But what is important, it's uh, when the environments activate, you see like uh, this in parentheses, NV. This is signaling that our environment is actually activated. So, first step, great virtual environment. Second step, instead of tapping the Django. So for this, we can, now that we have our environment, uh, be sure to have this, pip uh, install Django, and uh, the Django is installing. Okay, and after the Django is installed, since we already know that we are going to build an API, we have these important things to install. pip Django. REST framework, which is the framework that we're going to use to create the API. And I think it's better easy to do that now, install the course and set up the course. So I think the name is correct. And uh, we are going also to do the setup of the course. So as you can see, everything is installed and what course basically do is doing. So since you are going to have uh, different URLs, different origins, one from the back end, it's going to be 8,000, and another part from the front end, it's going to be 5153, if I'm uh, right. And uh, if uh, you are communicating the APIs from different origins, they're going to have a problem because for security reasons, it's important to uh, usually in the web they only recognize transfer of information from, um, from the same port, from the same endpoint. But here, we are going to do a separate front end and a separate back end. So, this is what we are going to need, of course. So, next step is to create actually the project. So, it's going to be let me make sure that we are in the boot directory. Okay. Django and mean. So start projects and the name of our project is going to be journal bullet. Yeah. 
Yep. Click OK. And there we have. OK, now we are inside the journal ballot. We have, we have our. This is actually where the backend is. We have here the file manage.pi and the journal bullet here that you have like the main app for our settings. So from here, we can already start to create a new app that we're going to need. That's going to be the users in the journal bullet. We do manage.pi start app and we're going to name this users and if we see our user now is great that we are going to need that in the future okay so this is created so what we're going to do now we are going to do the setup of uh, the react so for this i'm going to go back to the root directory so this could be considered the root directory, but it's going to be that one for the back end, the front end. And now that I'm here, we are going to create a React app. Instead of typing, I'm going just to, to copy that baller plant command. It's going to be npm write with uh, lattice front end and uh, template one. React and it's going to create a directory named front end and a project inside React. Okay. And we have here, we have like our front end. Now, if you are going to do CD front end, we have to do npm install. And after our front end uh, and uh, our node packet management will be, will be installed, we can actually run the server and it's installing <coughs> and after a certain time it's it will finish install that we are now now it's there like we have uh, already our uh, react template that uh, it's working for example if we do this uh, we are ready in the front end if you do npm run dev we're going to create uh, um, local url where we are going to have our content with react application okay and this is i forget that we are going to, we are using vit to create the app on react so but this is not usually the way that i like to see things i like to see things in vs code so we are going back here uh, in our terminal in our root directory let's say codes dot all and yeah of course i trust that other because it's me <laughs> and let's go to open to terminals here so we can like see them better I like to open for instance of uh, terminal here i did like um, um a shortcut but if you want to create a terminal, you come here, you create a new terminal, and there is. So the first two is going to be for the backend. That backend, there is our backend journal wallet. I will say that name that backend it will be like um, easier to recognize. But let's say that actually, let me see if there is any conflict. If I do backend, because I think it's going to be easier for you. If that one is front end, and the other one it's back end. Okay, so now we have the back end. And let's go. CD backend. We are kind of ready. Python manage.pi run server for you to see that the Python backend is running. Here we also do the backend, just to not forget. Ah, we forget one thing. We forgot one thing. We have the, this is working. We have the plane migrations. But to make sure what you have to do, it's um, web of environment activate. Because if you are going to install 
package in the future. We're going to install a not in that container. It's going to be a mess around the computer. So be sure to install of virtual environment and install the virtual environment we have to be in the root container. So now if we have that command, it's working. And that is what we have to do at least for that one, for the other. The same thing. Let's go to the director. Now we are going with CD to the back end. Here we are also in the back end. And here let's name this React server. Let's do this CD to the front end. And CD to front end. Okay, a virtual environment is set. So let's run our servers. I don't manage the PI server. We are doing the same thing here. npm run dev. And they are here. So this is the port 8000, which is the port for this is the port for the backend from the Django. The other one is 5173, which is the port for the front end. Okay, so we have our two servers, great. So now our next step, because we have to integrate them, we have to tell a way of saying, okay, Vit, you are going to retrieve information and send information, communicate information with the backend, with uh, the Django. And eventually, we need to configure that. And this is why we install the course. So, this is what we're going to configure right now. We have it in an applied migrations, but it's not important at the moment. So, for this, we are going to settings. And uh, what we want to do here is to raise, okay. In the install app, I already have a boilerplate uh, copy paste that I use to do it, which I'm going to copy right now. And uh, there is the only things that we have changed. It's uh, this is what was, this is this, the apps that uh, we're going to put on the internet apps. Now we already have created the users. If you get profiles, you put your profiles, etc. etc. So on the other ones that in the install apps, it was the external apps that we install, it was the REST framework that we already installed, and uh, the course headers. So next step, what we're going to do in the course headers, we have to install the middleware and already also I'm going to do a copy paste. It's going to be that one and be sure to put below session middleware and above common and uh, now the only thing that we have to do is to allow the origins allow origin and since we are using vit we already copying past this is always the same we are going to allow the origin what's going to tell you are going to tell here django that uh, is able to communicate and share resource only with uh, that origin, that origin is allowed. So that way, in Vit, we can actually make requests on the API and uh, communicate with the backend server in Django. So this is um, the part 5173 because we are going to, we are using Vit. And that's it. It's, this is the most basic setup that we can do. At the moment, we have created the backend, we have created the front end, and we allow them to share data, to communicate via installing cores. Okay, the only things that we can do now, and I think it's a good uh, 
being good to do. Not a good thing, a good practice. So we're going to install Git and uh, also we install the um, to create a file requirements.txt. Okay, for this, the requirements.txt is going to be in the backend because we want uh, the versions of the package in uh, our Python backend. So we created the requirements of test. It's going to be by ip freeze. That's going to get all the list of the package that we have. And we are going to create a file requirements.txt. Click OK. And we have here requirements.txt done. And this is all the package that we have installed. By with Django and also that the Django and other frameworks are using, which is that one. Now, for the Git, um, we can do two things. We can create like separate, um, because just this is if we are going to do deploy, it is the best thing to do was to create um Git repository on the backend and the Git repository in the front end. We can actually deploy it, uh, them into different servers on GitHub. And after we deploy to render, for example, on Netlify, and after we connect that, them. You see, here we are not going to do that. I'm just going to create a super, let's say that a super. Okay, I want that. Yeah, it's here. We're going to create a super grid that uh, it's going to be here. That's going to include the front end and the back end. Let's uh, now, for now, git. Let me see if you are in the journal bullet. Okay, I'm in that directory, directory, and it in it. Okay, we have uh, already in the install. Or uh, initialize our Git. Another good practice is to create our Git ignore file. So we are going to set up that now, so we don't have to think too much about later because we can still need to think either if we need what things we want to ignore. So Git ignore, and we create like our file here. And if you don't know what a git ignore does, it uh, we, are, we are going to put here all the sensitive information or the things that we don't want to be in uh, the repository when we push it. For example, the NV, there is no need for the NV being pushed to GitHub. And we usually have already some uh, templates. Django git ignore template. Yet git ignore template. Yeah, but the most important are usually the VNVs, the node, the modules in the case of React. And uh, okay, we can do that one, that one. We copy everything. You can see where here the dot env. We are going to make sure this is the file that we are going to create uh, now. Mm -hmm. And also and here env. And the same thing here. <laughs> okay, so now our git file is great. We can actually git pod all. But there is more thing that we should do now that is to create 
dot env file so to put like the environment variables to do that we are going to need another package it's going to be pip install django environ okay and we're almost done because after we do all of these we don't have to think much more about that anymore in the future so we are going to create the VNV, we can create the actually, why not? Okay, we're going to create in the backend, just clear a bit. We're going to create the NV because it's going to be the, the uh, environment variables for the backend. So we search dot NV. It's here. And actually, it's also a good practice to say search.nv example like this. Because this is the file that we are not going to push, uh, that's going to have sensitive information. But uh, if we put on the repository on GitHub, we want to know, to let the um, people that are watching the repository to know which are the environment variables that we are using. So this is going to be just a file that can contact the name of the environment variables and nothing more. So the things that we have to do, we are going to add a lot more things in uh, .nv, but what usually, what people usually put here first is our secret key and the debug. Okay, here. We will have, will not have. Important in the env file, remove like the empty spaces. Secret key, debug, yeah, done. And now we have to set up our settings, dot poi, like the journal bullet settings. And here we are going to import environ. This is uh, the package that we install from Django environment. And now let's create environment.nv debug is going to be equal to bool. And false. Next step is actually to say where is our environment environment file, and I think that one is here, and it's going to be environment dot nv dot read nv. And we are going to read it from base directory. Let's say dot nv. Okay, this is going to allow us to read our um, nv file. And after this, we come here. We substitute our sensitive information for information that it's here in our NV file. So it's going to be secret key. Make sure the names match. And here it's going to be NV debug. And here. Okay. Let me just confirm everything. Okay, and uh, we are good now. Everything is set up. So let's run again our Python server. Single server in that case. It's running. Okay. This is uh, the end of the setup. It was uh, quite intense. One we we 
went through a lot of little details, but uh, if we do that now, it's it's uh, better since we don't have to think much more about this later. And we already have this. We have our Django server that's running. It's connected with our React app, with cores, with the help of cores. The React app it's running. So we are good to go. For the next videos, we are not going to touch in uh, React for some time. We are going to use Django on the Re Django REST framework. And uh, we are going to create uh, our custom user models. And we are going to use also Joser for the authentication. And uh, yeah, I don't want to advance much more about what we are going to do. But this is the basic setup that uh, we have Django and uh, yeah. Okay, so let's keep more in the next video. If you like that video, subscribe because if you think that the information is valuable, it can be also valuable for other people. And see you in the next video.